Yeah, good morning and afternoon, everyone, to wherever you're watching this session from. Uh, my name is Raymond, and I will be presenting to you guys on uh, no code provisioning with Terraform Cloud. Okay. So before we start, uh, you know, this is the agenda for today. We will talk about why no code provisioning, uh, why is it for, uh, why uh, do we need it, uh, the challenges that uh, is this particular feature is aiming to solve, and uh, who is this uh, feature for. Right, and then followed by a very really short demonstration of how to actually stay it out on Terraform Cloud. Okay, so let's get into the action on why no code provisioning. So before we look at the why, right, let's take a look at uh, the current state of the cloud. Right, uh, you know, HashiCorp has recently done a cloud, a state of the cloud strategy survey. Right, so this survey is based on opinions and feedback of uh, a lot of our customers around the globe. Uh, you know, giving their, their say right on uh, how their experiences on operating on the cloud. So it's a pretty good and informative report. So if you're interested, feel free to click on the link there and uh, take a look. But you know, the, the TLDR version, right, which is the five uh, uh, important figures that uh, were condensed out of the report is that uh, these are the five figures that is that's being listed. And actually two, of, two out of the five of the figures are actually relevant to uh, the topic of today which is uh, you know, the, the one that is being circled here. 86% uh, rely uh, you know, uh, of, of the current uh, uh, infrastructure actually relies a lot on uh, the cloud platform team, right? which is managing the cloud resources or platform platform itself in particular. And then you know, they are mentioning that the number one uh, problem or challenge that they face is that there's a lack of skills right, in terms of managing uh, all these different tools in helping the uh, you know the the organization to move forward with the, with the cloud journey, right? So coming back to uh, our topic of today, which is uh, in the context of Terraform Cloud, you know we have we are seeing that you know in the state of the cloud, uh, we know that resources get spin up uh, easily, right? And then that makes it uh, a lot harder to manage, right? All the requests that's coming into the cloud platform team, right? So we are seeing a lot of uh, high quantities of tickets or requests for cloud resources big uh, requests for spinning up or requests for RDS or EC2 instance, for example. And then, you know, uh, all these requests from what we notice are very repetitive, right? So imagine if you are a developer, you know, most often, right, you'll be requesting for uh, RDS or database, right, to host your uh, applications, your stateful applications. And then sometimes you'll be, you know, the good old uh, VM, right, to actually run your deployment, so on and so forth. And then you know, this leads to a bottleneck uh, operations because all these uh, massive volumes of tickets basically get routed to the ops team or the cloud infra team. And then uh, you know, they are the only ones they are actually managing Terraform uh, uh, Enterprise or Terraform Cloud uh, platform itself. So you know, they have to take time to take a look at all these requests so as to fulfill all these requests. And then this leads to you know, a, long, a long time to process all these requests. And then uh, ultimately leads to inefficiency and uh, you know, the wastage of time. So you know, in terms of uh, Terraform uh, Cloud or, you know, or, or the automation journey or rather, right? so we know that Terraform Cloud is a tool that is capable of uh, helping you, know, you to uh, automate the, the provisioning of infrastructure with IAC. Right? So ultimately that's only phase one. right? So we know that this uh, particular platform is capable of a lot more. Right. So in terms of phase two and phase three, we are seeing that you know, in terms before we actually scale up to uh, massive uh, consumption, you now we have to first sell phase two, which is to standardize, right? To which means to incorporate uh, existing workflows to uh, conform to existing standards or regulations that is, that is required by the organization. And then ultimately, once that is being uh, established, we can go ahead and scale automation, right? So of course, uh, the key part of scaling automation is to be able to integrate with self serve tools, which is uh, you know, practically the, uh, the different side of the same coin of the topic that we are going to discuss today, right, which is in the likes of uh, no code provisioning. Right, so coming back to uh, the problem itself, uh, so what is who is no code provisioning for? So no code provisioning is definitely for a platform team as mentioned, because the other one, which is handling all these requests and they are actually, uh, you know, if you remember the statistics that uh, we have seen earlier on, there's a huge OA reliance on the cloud platform team, right? So uh, a feature like no code provision will definitely help to ease all these requests. 
right? And then especially, this is especially so for a small platform team, which is uh, managing all these requests. And also we are, you know, as, as mentioned, we have uh, seen repetitive infrastructure requests. So, uh, you know, no corporation is definitely able to help with that. Right. Also, of course, from the consumption side or the consumer side, uh, especially on the developers, they will be able to self-serve infrastructure requests without uh, knowing tell from itself. Right. So we also have, have uh, seen that uh, the top challenges is that uh, there's, a, there's a lack of skill, right? There's a lack of uh, people who, is, who, who knows Terraform, who, who operates the Terraform on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, you know, by allowing local provisioning, we're actually giving uh, the keys to the developers to actually self-serve uh, infrastructure requests without knowing Terraform itself. And then of course, on the management perspective or the whole organization as a whole, uh, this helps to maximize ROI because uh, uh, investment has been made on this particular platform. This platform is definitely capable of reaching the scale of automation to that particular level. And then uh, with local provisioning, we were able to leverage more on the platform and then to maximize ROI and of course to save time overall, right? So this makes the whole organization happy. All right, so that's uh, about it on the introduction to local provisioning. Why is it uh, we need this function and uh, who is it uh, for? So now we have a little demo on actually how to set uh, the entire thing up on Terraform Cloud, just uh, some prerequisites. Right, so it's best that, uh, you know, before, uh, you know, if you are looking at this demo, it's best that you have some knowledge on Terraform basics, right? The basic Terraform plan apply what is Terraform, IIC in general, and uh, Terraform modules as well, right? So this is actually the, the fundum, uh, foundation of uh, setting up local provisioning. So if you're not familiar with Terraform modules, they are actually a way to wrap up long lines of codes, right? To make uh, existing uh, Terraform codes more reusable. By a lot of people. And then of course, Terraform Cloud itself, especially on the module registry part. So this module registry allows uh, users to host uh, all these Terraform modules uh, in a place where uh, consumers can easily see and refer, right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump to the demo. Right, so uh, this is the demo, uh, this is the Terraform UI. Okay, so you know, this is, uh, if you're familiar with Terraform Cloud, this should be, uh, quite uh, easy to navigate for you, All right? So basically, so now let's uh, let me show you on the perspective of a developer. So to consume no code modules, right? So basically, what you need to do is to go to registry, and then uh, once if the no code provisioning modules are being set out, you should be able to see as a catalog here available for selection. Later on, I will show you on the developer uh, on the cloud infra side, right? On how to set this up. So on the consumption side, right, you will be able to see this as, uh, not, I'm setting up RDS as example to consume no code ready uh, modules. So let's say I'm picking this. And then of course, if it's no code ready, it will be tagged as no code ready. And then you'll be able to filter uh, the, the no code ready modules for uh, if you want to use that, right? So this is RDS that I have here. And then, uh, and then if I were to consume it further, I can, uh, proceed to provision workspace. And then you can see that, uh, you know, if you are familiar with modules, right? Uh, this is the way that uh, you know, uh, existing IC codes can be uh, consumed very easily with a few lines of codes, right? Of course, at the back end, it could be uh, 100 or 200 lines, but modules helps to, uh, helps, with the uh, help helps with the consumption by reducing it to a couple of lines. But of course, for no code provisioning, we are not even touching uh, these few lines of code as well. We can push it to provision a workspace. And then as a developer, right? Let's say I would, uh, I'm requesting an RDS of uh, this uh, UI interface. Let me just go here and find some password, uh, a username, and then uh, DB and MSA, uh, all these demo, right? all these parameters that are relevant to me. And then go here and fill out workspace name. So let's go here, no code demo, and then let's select a project uh, to provision the workspace uh, within this particular project called Snapshot. And then auto apply is the preferred method because uh, ideally uh, the consumer doesn't need to know about Terraform apply and plan process, right? So I want everything to be automated as, as automated as possible. So select auto apply and go ahead and create a workspace. And basically that is it. 
right? As somebody who doesn't know Terraform, with a few clicks on the button, with uh, you know, and then filling up a form, uh, inputting all the relevant parameters that's required for my end, I'm able to make use of Terraform and provision uh, ideas on my own, right? And uh, basically, that's the experience of uh, no code provisioning. So coming back to how do I set it up in the first place? Right, so now change it back to the persona of, let's say I'm the Terraform expert or the DevOps engineer or the cloud infra team within the organization. So the way to set this up is to basically host the modules and make it uh, available here for selection. So by doing that, uh, we can uh, allow more, uh, easier consumption as we've seen earlier, right? So the way to do it is to first go to registry and right? publish a module. And then here, this is where you should have your codes ready being hosted on a VCS of a choice. So here I have GitHub uh, ready with my RDS code uh, hosted. So here I can go ahead and select RDS. Oh, RDS is being selected. Let me choose another one as an example. All right, let me choose EC2 as an example, All right? And then to publish it, uh, if you want to make it tag as uh, no code provision, uh, on, on the registry itself, as you've as seen earlier. So just go ahead and click this, and it should be tagged as no code ready. All right, so here uh, you would be able to see you know, some tips on how to write modules that will suit this no code ready workflow better. So basically, there's a, a few rules right, uh, to follow in order to write a code that is uh, no code ready, uh, no, no code provisioning ready. Right. And then uh, if you are interested, you can uh, look more into the documentation. All right, so basically just click publish module and this would show up uh, like the, uh, the, the RDS module that you had seen earlier on. All right, so it's pending, it takes some time to be published and there you have it. And then you have a module that's ready for consumption uh, from other parties uh, within the company. Right, so yeah, I'm going ahead to let this provision. And yeah, basically the, the entire flow is as easy as that from both from a developer's perspective or, or from a setup perspective or from the cloud platform side. Okay. While this is uh, provisioning in progress, uh, any questions that uh, does uh, anyone have? Uh, okay, no questions. So uh, I have a, a bonus demo that I prepared, right? Which is uh, in the same line of local provisioning, right? So earlier on, you have seen uh, how do we run the entire no code provisioning process. So basically the idea is the same, right? You want to have a, a nice UI or a form view that allows uh, users who doesn't know Terraform to easily pick up something that has been pre-configured uh, on the Terraform site and then consume it on the fly, right? So the concept is the same. So now uh, I have a form, but uh, now the form is in the, in, in the, in the likes of uh, yeah, in the likes of uh, uh, good old Google Forms, right? So basically this Google Forms has been configured to talk to Terraform Cloud to do the provisioning, right? So if uh, you know, in your organization, you have a designated uh, ITSM tool, such as let's say self-service or uh, some uh, AVFC companies who are using Jira, right? They can actually use uh, the existing way of uh, handling all these requests uh, with a centralized uh, required ITSM tool. Right, or designated tool. But here I'm just showing you an example of uh, Google Forms, right, which is something that everyone should be uh, relate relatable to. Right? So here, uh, same, the same concept. Uh, as a developer or somebody who doesn't know Terraform, I can go ahead and provision something of this Google Forms. And this is an example of creating a new EC2 instance. I'm just going to click next. And then basically the process is very similar. Right? And the workspace has point tests. Uh, pick out the parameters that is associated with the resources that I want to provision. 
submit it and done, right? And has provisioned something without writing Terraform code. And then here on Terraform itself, this is linked to another workspace. So you see that immediately the workspace has provision, the resources uh, will be provisioned uh, as, uh, as instructed on the Google Form itself. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the previous. It should be done. Yep, it's done. And then um, you know, I should be able to feedback all this information, right, via notifications so that I can access my resources straight away. All right, so um, that's all for my session today. Thanks.